तत्र अस्तंगवि अस्तंगत विशेषाला when the विशेषस when their specific features have अस्तंगत सूर्यो अस्तंगत right अस्तंगत they have become dissolved that is when the विकारस the so called entities which were earlier used to be regarded by us as vikaras have lost their vikaratva have lost their specific features which made them into particular vikaras different vikaras have lost those features astangat visheshana nivritta parinam vyaparana and their parinam vyapar परिणाम व्यापार देयर टेंडेंसी टू चेंज देयर ऑपरेशन देयर डिस्पोजिशन टू चेंज फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल द डिस्पोजिशन ऑफ महत टू चेंज इन टू अहंकार द डिस्पोजिशन ऑफ अहंकार टू चेंज इन टू पंच तन मात्र and ekadashendriya the disposition of pancha tanmatra to change into mahabhutas now just for a moment i here want to enter into a topic very briefly this is important it is often said that if this is all that the vyakta world is mahat अहंकार पंचतरमात्र एंड एकादश इंद्रिय पंचतरमात्र ऑन वन साइड एंड एकादश इंद्रिय ऑन द अदर साइड फ्रॉम अहंकार एंड देन फ्रॉम एंड देन फ्रॉम पंचतरमात्र पंच महाभूत देन व्हाट इज दिस वर्ल्ड व्हाट इज दिस वर्ल्ड ऑफ टेबल्स चेयर्स फैंस ट्रीज लेक्स एंड माउंटेन्स व्हाट इज is it not vyakta is it not manifest to us is it not comprehended by the senses it is not evident to senses is evident to senses i can say i am seeing shuchi but shuchi is not merely mahat ahankar or panchatanmat shuchi is a body too a physical body but there is no mention of a physical body in the uh, in the uh, 23 tattvas that evolve out of prakritis and purusha sanidhya so how do we account for these physical bodies these material objects infinity of material almost and almost infinity infinite multitude of material objects what do we say about anybody who has an answer are they not vikaras of prakriti and if they are as they seem to be why should they call why should they also not be called vikaras vikritis why stop at pancha mahabhutas yes please a bit louder very good they are the building blocks this is philosophy they are the building blocks right because when sankhya talks of tattvas see sankhya uses the word tattvas prakriti is one tattva purush is another tattva and 23 uh, mahat ahankar etc are also tattvas there is no difference between all these 25 principles so far as their characters character of being a tattva is concerned they are all tattvas that is why say tattvantar parinam change of one tattva into another but fan is not a tattva 
A camera is not a tattva. This physical body is not a tattva. Why? It is made of, it is made up of five tattvas, pancha mahabhutas. They are tattvas. They are tattvas, pancha mahabhutas. They are tattvas born of ahanka, uh, 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 what's the pancha They are tattvas. Satasya bhava tattvam, as Professor Panna was yesterday quoting from Vatsya and Bhaisya. Right? But tattva means basic categories. To put it in a slightly more philosophical terminology, these are the basic categories. Without them, you can't do. They are needed to explain the world. Every philosophy, every school of thought tries to conceive those categories which are necessary to understand the world, understand the given world. That given world may be ultimately declared to be unreal, but it can't be denied that it is given to us, given to the senses, given. We use the word pradatta. It is given. Given to whom? To the donor. Right? Given to somebody. Given to a recipient. Donor is, I'm sorry, donor is the world. The world. I'm the recipient. Is given to me. Given to the senses. Right? Given to the senses. That is why perception is very important. Perception, pratyaksha, is a primordial mode of knowledge. How do you prove? that there is a specific feature called mahat or ahankara or indriyas or pancha tanamat etc. Because I am anticipating some of the things so that I don't have to deal with them at that time. Right? I, I, I'll try to explain. Mahat, buddhi. What is buddhi? Adhyavasayo. Adhyavasayo buddhi. Adhyavasaya is what? Adhyavasaya is nishta. To affirm. To affirm. To say positively, something is this. This. To affirm. To affirm that something is this. As Yukti Deepka gives the example, this is a cow. This is a cow, not kinchid asti. Kinchid is doubt. It's something. I don't know what. No, it's something. You can say, how do you account for Brahma? Because in Brahma, though there is affirmation of something, but that affirmed thing turns out to be non-existent, if not unreal. It would say, still, it's an affirmation. It's an affirmation. Only it's a wrong affirmation. It's a wrong judgment. But it's a judgment nevertheless. It's a judgment. We say, this is a cow. Judging rightly that this is a rope. Raju ki jagha, Raju ko thik na jaan kar sarp kehna, wo bhi affirmative judgment. Nishtay. Doesn't matter if nishtha turns out to be a wrong nishtha. But a nishtha is always susceptible to being wrong. It's always susceptible. If there had not been error, then we, we would have been omniscient beings. Agar brahmna hota, to hum sarvagya hote. Hum finite nahi hote. But we are finite beings. Why are we finite beings? Because we can know only up to this much. Only up to this much. There was a thinker called Martin Buber. I once read him. And, but uh, the book, I once read it, I and Thou. He was a Jewish, he was a Jew and a Jewish philosopher. I and Thou. And 
one, one of his books I read, The Knowledge of Man, very long time back, though it's a short life, but within a short life, there can be long lapses of time, you know. So I read, he defines infinity, infinity first of all, in a very unusual way. Hey, what is infinity? That we can know at all that we can know at all hum jaan sakte hain this is infinity infinity that we can know only this much simit kya hai we can know only this much aur asimit kya hai that we can know at all a fan perhaps cannot know is neither infinite nor finite there is a finite in the sense is a limited existence. That difference is. But epistemically, at the level of knowledge, is neither infinite nor finite. Gyan ke leo star par, ye na finite hai na infinite. Satya ke star par ye finite hai. It came into being. Am I okay if I speak sometimes in Hindi? Is it okay to you, some of you? Okay, right. So, Satya ke star par, ye finite hai. Lekin gyan ke star par, ye na infinite hai, na finite. It can neither know this much, nor it can know at all. It cannot know at all. Apparently. Though perhaps Vedanta might differ. Advaita Vedanta might differ. Now it is. So, uh, yes, uh, I was discussing Mahat. So we, we feel that sometimes we make an affirmative judgments. And sometimes we feel we are not making any affirmative judgment. We are not knowing anything affirmatively or positive. We are just imagining. My three-year-old maternal grandson tells me sometimes, Nana, I had a dream. So that means at the age of three, he's able to distinguish between what it means to have a dream in which there is only imagination and what it means to be in a waking, wakeful condition where we are normally surrounded by the world of objects, actual objects. So he can distinguish what it means to imagine and what it means to perceive, right? That what he saw in the dream, perhaps for example an elephant, he might have seen himself as riding an elephant, no more exists. No can exist. So this is how we come to understand, know the faculty called Mahat. Ahankar. Each of us, Ahankar means ego maker, which generates the ego. Ahankar. Ahankaroti ti Ahankar. Which gives the sense of I. I. You say the child has no sense of I. Anybody, anyone among you, might say the child i would say of course certain things we realize certain distinctions come into our mind we begin to understand when we grow into adulthood i grant that but even a child knows that he exists that he exists you try to tinker with him and he will resist I have seen young mothers carrying their children, and I am fond of children. If I try to touch them, they'll push my hand away. Push my hand away from where? From themselves, from their body. At that time, they are identified themselves with their bodies. Why not? I too am identifying myself with my, bi with my body at the moment. If Jaya asks me, what are you doing, sir? I'll say, I am speaking. I am speaking. 
speaking is a part of the body though i normally represent the soul soul can't speak the soul can speak through the body right soul can speak through the indriyas karma indriyas just as it can know through the gyan indriyas so ankar we know a child knows if a child is standing on a uh, on a something higher and it has to get down it will see whether he can really uh, get down easily is aware of its existence is aware of its existence it feels hungry it cries it knows the child knows he is hungry he can't say but saying is not important knowing is important and feeling is knowing here feeling hungry is knowing that one is hungry isn't it anybody disagrees with this proposition i say i often say oh i need tea that means i know that i need tea i can't say oh do you if i say i need tea or do you really need it oh let me think whether i really need tea or not i don't say that if i need tea i would and i'm being honest i say i need tea and you won't say think about it whether you really need it or not i'm sure i need tea or any other thing like for example a chocolate which are very important with the life and breath of children <laughs> so ahankar we have a feeling of ahankar who says ahankar is not evident to us it can't be evident to us by like this phone it need not be tangible but every moment of my existence except during dreamless sleep i know that i exist do i do not say that i exist but if somebody ask me do you exist i would say don't you know that i exist and don't you know that i know that i exist right of course i don't have to parade my knowledge of my existence every time i speak or do something or think something i don't have to say i exist therefore i am writing i exist therefore i am drinking water no i'm say i'm drinking water and if you say do you exist can't you say see from the fact that i'm drinking water it's evident from the fact that i'm drinking water that i exist of course somebody say but you exist bodily i say that will come to later for the time being accept the fact that i at least exist bodily that i have a body whether i have a soul to will come to that point later let us accept the given facts right now this is buddhi i am touching upon things very briefly very very briefly because the text is quite large and we have to do quite a few things still quite a few things so this is mahat buddhi ahankar now comes indriyas ankar indriyas ekadash indriyas yan indriyas are understood they are accepted all over the world five cognitive senses yan indriyas right this is yan hota hai right nasika chakshu etc shotra etc and pant karmendriya se motor organs are also accepted all over the world there is no dispute among philosophical schools anywhere in the world about these five or five or 10 things about mind there is a problem that will discuss some other time but they say ekadash indriya manaha ekadash indriya manaha why does sankhya accept that mana sankhya says there are certain things we, we, which we cannot perceive through the senses through our sense organs yanindriyas i cannot know my sadness through my nose 
can I? I direct my nose towards my inner state of sadness. Can I smell my sadness? Can I smell my sadness? Can I smell my jealousy, feeling of jealousy? Can I smell my happiness? Of course, I may smell something which gives me happiness. But then there would be two comprehensions. One would be that I'm smelling something. And that smell I know, a definite kind of smell, with which I, I can't explain. If anybody has not perceived a rose, I cannot tell him how a rose smells. I cannot tell. Bhatri Hari is wrong. Bhaganu Vidha Sarvam Sarva Samdit. No. Jato Vaso Nibartam. Even at the level of ordinary perce uh, uh, perception, there's a limit to words. If somebody has not perceived a fan, I can, I can only say that fan is something which gives you air. If he knows what, it, what is air. If, I, if, if, I've, taken, if I've eaten tobacco, uh, 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 a chocolate, I can't explain to anyone what it means to eat chocolate. What, is, uh, what chocolate tastes like, I can't explain to anyone. Please tell me whether you can. Please tell me. Anybody can do that? Of course. If more than one person has taken tasted chocolate, then they can discuss whether this chocolate tastes better or this tastes better. Then they can discuss. If they both have tasted both, both kinds of chocolates. Right? My God, why are they flying? So, but there are things which I feel, which are as evident to me, in fact about which I am more sure about my, more sure than about the knowledge of external objects, about which I am never wrong, if I am sad. And if I have a word for sadness, I would not say I am happy. If I know the distinction, difference of the word sadness and happy, and if I am sad and I want to convey to somebody or think to myself what state I am in at the moment, or seek a doctor's help, for example, in a state of depression, I would say I am depressed. The doctor queries, you might be happy actually, and you are wrongly saying you are depressed. I am saying, no. My wife has passed away. I'm grieving. I'm sad. I can't be happy. I'm not happy. Some other moments I may be happy. Some other moments, when I see my grandchild, that may be happy. That's a different thing. There are different occasions. At a particular occasion, when you have, when you are in a particular state of mind, sadness, happiness, mental pain, anguish, misery, etc., jealousy. Jealousy is a common feature among children, among adults. Indira Gandhi was jealous of Gayatri Devi, is a known fact. Maharani Gayatri Devi. Maybe because she was more beautiful and she was as rich as anything. So she put him during the emergency, I'm a witness to that, she put him during the emergency into the jail. She was not a political being. She was not a Jayaprakash Narayan. But she was put into jail. Jealousy is a monster. You have seen in Olympics one girl, right, hitting the leg of another girl in a race so that she is not able to win. And we know when we are jealous that we are jealous. If the doctor, a psychologist, asks us to confess, of if I'm a Christian, a father asked, asked me to confess, I would confess that I was jealous at times, being jealous of these people. I was jealous of my, because she was a better actor, like in case of Amitabh and Jaya Bachchan. 
or like in case of Ravi Shankar and his wife, Pandit Ravi Shankar, his wife recently confessed that Ravi Shankar was jealous of him. Because, because she was drawing more audience. So Ravi Shankar asked her to stop playing sitar. His career was sunk, was raped. So I say jealousy is a monster. But I'm not dwelling upon jealousy. I'm saying these are mental states and they're known to us. There's a beautiful sutra, as I was telling my student Jaya yesterday, in Yoga Sutra. Which, is, which has a strong affinity with this, with what I am saying. Sada jnata chitta vrittaya statrabho purusasya aparidamitva. Sarva jnata, sarva jnata. All the mental states, chitta vritti means mental states, are known to us. Known to us means to the seer, to the seer self, to the witness self. But how can the witness self say? See, the witness, but why are the states not, not known to themselves? They are not known to themselves because while they keep on changing, he remains permanent. He is the seer of every mental state. He is the seer of every mental state. Like a man who is sitting on the seaside, on the beach, he can see various sorts of movements in the sea rather than the man who is moving in the sea. So that's seer self. Though I don't agree with this conception, I have different things to say that I would not say, but because I'm representing Sankhya, yoga position, with which Advaitin position is also in agreement, so I'm trying to expose it. So, we are knowing it. So, Indriyas, and we know our Indriyas. Ask a, ask a child who is two years old, are you listening? No, I'm watching TV. I'm seeing TV. Are you listening to music? Yes, I'm listening to music. Even a snake knows what a good music is like. Right? Senses. So we soon cover, discover that we have senses. We tell the child, you close your eyes, and then when he can't see, then he realizes that this, if he sees, and he knows that he sees, then he sees through this organ, right? Close his ears, and then the child learns, I said, these are the ears, and he learns, these are the Gyanidriyas. So all these manifest tattvas, vyakta world, tattvas, not simply objects, not ordinary objects, they are known to us with their specific features. Ankara has one sort of feature, Buddhi has one sort of characteristic, function or characteristic, Indriyas and Mana. And about our mental state, we come to know through Manas, Manas, Sukha, Dukha, etc., etc. Not that Sukha, Dukha are the only mental state, etc. We know whether I am happy or not. Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. I'm, I think I'm okay. Huh? I can't say. I doubt whether I'm happy. You say you are a fool. You can't be happy and knowing that you are happy and yet saying, saying that you are being honest. No, I don't know whether I'm happy or not. Like Wittgenstein says somewhere, foolishly enough, in his tractatus, this either in philosophical philosophical investigation or they, there must be a pain somewhere, and yet nobody knowing where that pain is. I gave this example in one of my articles, and then there's a novel Hard Times by Charles Dickens, where, where there's a character, a female character. He says, he says, "Are you feeling pain? I don't know." I know there's a pain somewhere, but I don't, I don't know whether I have it. There's a pain somewhere, you know. How? I don't know whether Shruti has pain, whether Jaya has pain, whether that gentleman has pain, I don't know. Unless 
I see their bodily reactions and then infer that they might be in pain. But my inference may be wrong because he may simply be acting. A child, children often act. Children often act. <laughs> acting, we, we begin with acting. And all of our life we keep, we keep on acting, pretending, pretending. I'm a great man. You should respect me because I've come here. So all these Vyakta Tattvas we know. And Panchata, important. Now there is Pancha Mahabhutas. They are clear. Let me explain these things so that you later don't have, uh, I don't have to exp uh, expend much time on that. Now, because we are, after all, we are talking of Vyakta and Avyakta and Jya. About self, I have already said something. I'll be saying more about it later on. Now, who comes? Pancha Mahabhutas. We know, even the Charvakas believe, that we are made, made up at least of four elements. They remove ether from that. Ether from that. We more the four elements, right? Here, everybody is in agreement, and we know it. So four elements. We are a phenomenon of those four elements. We are not the object. We are a phenomenon of those elements, as K.C. Bhattacharya puts it. We are a phenomenon of these tattvas. We are not tattvas. We are our bodies, I mean. We mean our bodies. We are a phenomenon of those tattvas. So we know these tattvas. But what is Panchatara Matra? What is it doing? There's a lot of ambiguity about it. Panchatara Matra. People normally say there are subtle elements. Subtle elements of what? And remember, the word is Tan Matra. Tat Matra. Tat Matra. And they are called Avishesha later on in the Sankhya Karika. As you might have heard when Professor Pena was doing the whole of Sankhya Karika on the first day. They are called Avishesha. And Pancha Mahabhutas are called Visheshas. What is Avishesha? And what is Tanumatra? That matra, that much, only that, that is with no specific features. Take, for example, the word sound. I say, first of all, on first sound, there is sound outside. Do I know what kind of sound is there? or what kind of noise is there, I simply sometimes, sometimes say, express my knowledge of the whole phenomenon, which I've comprehended through my sense. I say there is noise or sound outside. This element of sound, without being a specific sound, without being a specific word, is tanamat. Shabda Tanamatra. Shabda Tanamatra. Sparsha Tanamatra. Say he, he touched me. Touching a fan and touching a woman have different experiences. But they are both touch because they involve contact of one physical body with another physical body. There can't be touch between self and body. There is sannidhana, because self cannot touch the body, nor can the body touch the self, according to Sankhya Yoga and Advaita, and even Vimansa and Nyaya. There can be proximity. Only bodies can touch each other. Any two bodies, right? Like, for example, two Dhyanukas can touch each other. They can be in, co in contact. Anus can touch, or electrons can be in touch. 
they can though there can be communication between souls selves they can be communication okay? so this is shabda tanamatra sparsha tanamatra roop tanamatra i say roop roop means form any form which is evident to the senses remember ekadash indriya and pancha tanamatra they emanate from the same tattva ekadash indriyas because ekadash indriyas has five cognitive senses and those five cognitive senses they what do they perceive what do they know pancha tanamatra shabda sparsha roop ras shabd we hear we know through our hearing sense we perceive roop roop even water has a roop water has a roop even in a sense vayu has a roop you can say whether it feels hot or cold hot wind for blowing how do you know how else can i tell except that i felt it <laughs> you can't explain to a child what it means to be hot unless he himself touches a hot thing you can't explain what heat and cold mean so perception is important so pancha tana matra and pancha gyan indriyas and then pancha karma indriya and gyan karma indriyas act in collusion in cooperation with gyanendra suppose i want to go to uh, kanyakumari what happens first of all i have a desire or first of all let me say i have heard about kanyakumari heard not in this sense not through the ears i've just heard somebody talking about kanyakumari is a beautiful place and since i have, I have some aesthetic sense and i want to say see beautiful things i want to go there what it means to see a place like kanyakumari uh, i i think to myself if i have the money let me go there now what do i do i go to the airport go how do i go not through the mental faculty i have to walk i have to walk or i have to open the computer karmendriyas with my hands and then see then again gyanendriya whether the flight numbers are coming which are going to kanyakumari which flight so karmendriyas and gyanendriya keep on cooperating with each other whenever we are in action something whenever we want to realize some aim i want to read i buy a book I need a material thing like money. I ask my father through speech. I need money. He gives me money. I go to the market, buy a book, or through karmendriyas, and then I see the book. I perceive, the, I read it, perceive, but then I try to understand it, not through eyes. Buddhi. Through buddhi. Through buddhi. i can't understand through eyes because sometimes i see certain things and yet not see them i see certain things and yet not see them i say hey, do you see that man somebody asked me do you see that man today do you meet him yes i met him what was he wearing perhaps a suit was he wearing a tie perhaps what color tie had and a tie can't be without a color that i don't know what color the tie had neck tie had that i don't know was in a car yes he was in a car did the car have four doors the, it must have because a car normally have five doors was it on wheels it had wheels what color the car had and the car must have a color and you don't know i didn't notice though you were seeing the car you have seen a car 
that is the man was in the car and yet to fail to notice the color the particular shade of the car so mere indriyas don't help there has to be manas ahankar ahankar which gives say uh, you are sure you saw the car but when i saw the car then i saw the car it can't be shuchi i don't know about shuchi i'm not sure about other people whether they they saw the same car but i know i saw a car i'm sure so like this manokto so all these manifest tattvas become i was telling you shabda tanamat sparsha tanamat gandha so gandha tanamat the element the subtle element what we call the subtle element the element of gandha is present everywhere in every smell and there can be any number of smells those different smells specific special smells carry a common feature of being smell just as all sounds whether understandable intelligible words or or the chattering of a of a child they have sound oh the child is crying though he is not saying why he is crying he can't speak yet he is only one year old but it has the quality of being a sound but all kinds of sounds tanpura has one sound tabla has one sound harmonium has another sound so on so forth on to infinity perhaps these are tanmatra i stop here shabda tanmatras are generalities general features generic what in nyaya is called samanya samanya universals shabd universal sound uh, roop universal and so they are generic features i hope i have been able to put across to you as best as possible something special about the 23 tattvas sankhya talks about which are the evolutions of prakriti and purush sanidhan